So the other day I received this comment right here and it got me wondering how did I never do a pixel art effect? So that's what we are going to see today, how to create pixel art effects. So normally you would draw frame by frame, right? But I got an easier way for you, you see, we can cheat a little bit with shaders, we can create something that will enable you to convert all of your effects into pixel art effects, I know, right? It's crazy. I mean, I think I can even convert myself into pixel art. Oh. Yeah, indeed, look at this. And this entire project is available on my Patreon page, links below in case you are interested. So, without further ado, let's jump right into this. So, most of the magic happens with a shader. So, with right click, let's create a blank shader graph. You could as well create an unlit shader graph. We can rename it to Particle Pixel Shader, for example, and double click to open this up. The first thing we need to tell this shader graph is the target in the Graph Inspector. In this case, it's going to be for the Universal Render Pipeline. I'm not going to use visual effects for this, but it could work in VFX Graph and in the built in Render Pipeline, by the way. The methods we are going to see are the same across different targets. And unlit, we don't want this to be affected by light. It's a few particles, and we want to turn on Allow Material Overwrite so we can control all of these options below here in the inspector, in the material, instead of opening Shadow Graph to change this, which is great. And yeah, we can say the surface type is transparent. Now, as any basic particle shader, we are going to need two properties. One is the color, and the other one is a texture 2D for the main texture. And for the default color, we can select white and set the alpha at 100. And don't forget to change the mode to HDR in case you want to make this glow with some bloom. And we can drag both of these properties. And as usual, a texture requires to be sampled. So let's do it. And the way we make the color influence the texture is by multiplying them. And we can already connect this to the base color. I'm going to show you something. Let's select default particle for now, which comes as default in any Unity project. And just to show you how things work, I'm going to create a material out of this shader. I'm going to call it the beam01 pixel shader, for example. And then I'm going to add a particle system and reset the transform. And down here in the renderer, we can assign that material to beam01. And this is what we have now. As you can see, we have the surface options right here because we have allowed material override inside the shader. But what I really want to show is that if we change this to a red, for example, nothing will happen because we need to give access to the particle system to the vertex color. Otherwise, it cannot influence the color of the shader. So, in Shader Graph, after the color, we want to multiply with the vertex color, which basically will give us access to each vertex and influence their color externally. And as soon as you save it, this becomes red. Great, we still have another problem because we have the black background, but that's easy to solve. We can split the last node and use the A channel, which is the alpha channel, to connect to the alpha input of the fragment function. And if you save this asset, well, we get transparency now. The black is gone. Great. This was the basic setup for any common particle shader. Now comes the very interesting part where we can transform any given texture to pixel art. And in this sample text, we have a UV input, which is basically the UV node. If you connect it, nothing will change because, well, it's the same thing. And that's great because now if we change how the UVs are mapped, well, maybe you can create a pixel art shader. The first node we are going to need is a mathematical node, which is the floor node, which will return the largest integer that is less than or equal to the value of the input and it becomes black because probably zero is the closest integer. But if we multiply this, for example, with two, as you can see, we get four squares. In some way, the UVs become pixelized. And if we create a float, 
for example, we can call it bit and set the default value to 8 and connect it to this multiply. As soon as we start playing with this 4, 2, as soon as we start using power of 2 numbers, we get some kind of columns and rows. Now, what if we could repeat this? Because as it is right now, if you connect to the UVs, well, we get a grid, which is very interesting, actually. In some cases, this could be very useful. But in our case, we need to kind of repeat the floor so we can have a grid full of squares. We actually only need to divide this by a certain amount. In this case, that amount, as you can see, it can be the bits value. So first we multiply the UVs with the bits value, then we floor it, and then we divide that result by the bits. And if we connect this to the UVs, boom, here we go. We have transformed our texture to a pixel art texture. And if you save the shader and have a look to our particle system, well, as you can see, we can play with the bits value and we get different feelings, different pixel art feelings. By the way, the size of the text will influence how many bits we need. Right, but we still have a little problem because, as you can see, this is not centered. And if we want to offset this back to the center, well, we got a node that can help us, which is the tiling and offset node. As you can see, if, for example, we insert 0 0.05 in the X and Y of the offset, it becomes centered. But as soon as the bits are 4, it's no longer centered and we need to change the offset to 0 0.1 or maybe 0 0.12. Yeah. So, we need to find a value that, that automatically adapts to this according to the bits value. And it's actually fairly easy. We only have to divide 0 0.4 by the bits value. And this will give us that 0 0.05 that we were looking for and we can connect to the offset. And if we decrease the bits, it's still centered. Maybe 0 0.45, it's a little bit more centered. Yeah. But as you can see, we have now a shader that can transform any texture to pixel art, and it's centered, which is great. So let's play a little bit with this. For example, if we wanted to create fire, well, we would first need to rotate this minus 90 in the X. Say the lifetime is between 0 0.5 and 1.5 seconds. The speed can be much less, 0 0.3 and 0 0.7. We are going to use velocity over lifetime. Size could be smaller as well, 0 0.5 and 1. Increase the rate over time to 30. Oh, and set the start color to white because we are going to use a gradient. Oh, and start rotation could be between 360 and minus 360 as well. We are just creating a quick smoke. And yeah, for the gradient, we, are, we have the color of a lifetime. For example, it can start from an orange and then go to black. And in between, we can add a little bit of red. Maybe in the beginning, we can also add a little bit of yellow, something like This. And the trick now, for example, is to increase the intensity of the color in the shader to something like 5, maybe even more. Yeah, I have bloom in my scene, by the way, a post-processing effect, a global volume. You can also create one with right-click. And yeah, for example, the shape could be smaller, the radius of this cone to 0 0.5. And then add a little bit of velocity in the Z between 0 and 2, and here we go, we have some kind of fire, maybe we can increase the intensity. That's basically how I created the bunch of effects you have seen in the beginning. That's basically how I converted all of the effects in the beginning. For example, you can control the beats now, yeah, 2 is weird, but 16, 8 is nice, and if we change the texture, it will automatically adapt. Basically, we don't need to create pixel art textures, we can simply convert any effect we want to pixel art with this, which is awesome. 
In some textures you need to adjust the bit's value, for example, in a flipbook which is 2x2, two two, the bits should be 16, but everything else works fine. You can set the texture sheet animation to 2x2 two two, and the curve to 3, the maximum, and here we go. Could as well increase the bits to 32 and get much more definition, for example. But yeah, that's how I created all of these effects, which are all available on my Patreon page, links below, by the way. So yeah, I hope you have enjoyed this technique, I think it's awesome. You can simply convert all of your texts or any effect you have around to a pixel art effect. I want to say thank you to each patron that supported, and a special shout out to the top tier patrons, which are Adrian Briet Ricky, Elak Frost, Albert Wagner, Austin Schneider, Aziz Mufare, Bao Yen, Kruby Dubidu, Diego Marx, Dion22, Donald Thompson, Edward Chai, Eric Hudson, Gilles Walter, Goblin Plague, Guilherme Trindade, John Nix, Hissi Miller, Lawrence, Leonardo Ferraz, Levin W, Little Tsai, Lia Ilyich, Lobster Posey, Maxim, Mograf Tech, Nat Sims, Oitsk, Oskari Taminen, Pokey, Radioactive Bullfrog, Revenant Games, Sharat Revichanka, Toasted Butter, Tyler Burns, Very Suta, Vlad Jakubicki, Waterbridge, Wesley Hall, William Morris, and Ingo Da. Thank you all for your support, you guys are amazing. And I hope you have enjoyed this video and I hope to see you in the next video. Thanks. Bye.